to show you guys how we do Farabee's hair. Um, so this is what we do every single day. This is not a bath day. This is just a every day what we do. So I have the medium coral. This is what it looks like. It's an awesome brush. And then I have this one and I don't know, it's also a, uh, the same brand, um, but it's for like really, really short hair and it's tiny. You see it's a little bitty. I got that to do her armpits whenever she had longer hair um, because you know you can just get in there a lot better. It's a lot shorter bristles. They do have a smaller one with big bristles, but this is the one I got because this one was a lot less money. It was like $30 and I think these are closer to 70. So that, a pair of scissors to cut the bands out. These are the bands I use. I use the Rainbow Loom bands. You can get them in a ton of colors. I just have red out to show you guys and then a coral color. And then the metal comb that I have is this one. It has hair on it, sorry about that. Oh, and then if you need a way to actually split um, their hair, you can part hair really good with this, but you could use anything really. First thing it brushes her tail. This is the big coral brush. Actually, it's the medium coral brush from Chris Christerson. I'll link it below for you guys. This is a really awesome brush. When you're brushing their tail, it's just super important to make sure you're going all the way to the skin. Okay, tail's done. Then now I'm gonna do her hair. What I do is I actually section her hair off. I have a lot of clips, five clips that I use. I never take everything down at once. So what I do, unless it's back day, obviously. But what I do is I just clip first part of her top knot up, and then I clip the second part of her top knot up, and then I clip the last part up, and then I brush her ears. I just use the same brush. And after I brush each ear, I use one of these clips. So I'm gonna, hopefully you guys can tell, it's like um, super rounded and it's pretty soft. Like it doesn't have a hard grip. So what I do is I actually just clip her ear in this. Um, and like I said, it doesn't actually touch her ear. It goes around her ear. You don't want those claws on the clip to actually touch her. Like, cause that would hurt. And if you're not sure if your dog has tangles, just use a, a comb like this, like a middle comb, and run through and see if there's any tangles in their ears. I know Fairby's ears don't get tangled. I know her tail doesn't get tangled. We do this every day, so I know, I kind of know what areas get tangled. Um, but just for the, the sake of showing, I'll show you guys. I mean, you can get the comb through it because that's the bottom of her ear. That's her ear hair and just goes through. So. If you're not sure, um, definitely use a comb and check. What I do to do her head hair, I just unclip the first section, I find the band. I redo these every day. I pull the band out around my finger and then I take scissors and I snip the band. Then what I do is I spray her hair with this. So this is the Bath Fresh Mist from Life Abundance. Um, it's supposed to just be like an after bath or like a between bath thing, but it's actually really slippery whenever you spray it on. So it works really good to brush her hair with this. We've also used this stuff, Body Dog Detangling Spray. This one's fine, but it doesn't do as good. And then we've also used Kinky Curly, not today. This one is by far my favorite though. I just do like a couple sprays. With her hair, the way that I brush it, I start closer to like the bottom of her hair, if that makes sense. So I start down here. I don't know if you guys can tell because she's kind of turned. But I start down here and just make sure all that is pulled out, all the tangles are pulled out if there are any. And then I work my way to like her scalp area. So what I do after I brush through with the coral brush, then I actually just take my metal comb and I go through it and make sure for sure that there's no tangles and then I band it. As I wrap each section back up with a band, I clip it down so that it's not in the way of the next section. And I just kind of work my way up in the same fashion I just showed you. So I use Rainbow Loom bands for her hair. You can get a ton of different colors and they're pretty inexpensive. The ones from the grooming shop are like triple the money and they don't have as many color options. So Rainbow Loom is the way to go. So when you're doing this, you wanna take your comb, your metal comb all the way to their scalp and then pull up from there because that's where it's gonna get matted at the most is at their scalp. So whenever you have to actually brush your dog's hair out and part it, use something and make a completely straight line. If you don't make a completely straight line, it will itch and you're gonna have your dog scratching their head a ton, which is obviously not good. They're gonna pull their hair out. Um, it's gonna pull their hair down. It's gonna make tangles and knots and stuff. 
So always part it on a completely straight line. But as you work your way, which you can't see her, which isn't helpful, as you work your way to the front of your poodle's hair, or maybe your doodle, I don't know, depending on whose hair you're doing, your long hair dog hair, um, you want to make these top knot parts, like, don't pull it so it sticks straight up. You can, but it's just going to fall forward. So what I do is I try to pull it so that it's going to be kind of at the back, if that makes sense. So it'd be kind of considered like a low pony. It's not going to be low because their hair is, you know, it's uh, a fluff. But that way, let me see if I can get this. That way, see how like there's a lot more hair up here, um, open I guess, exposed. And then down here, the band's like maybe a finger width from her scalp, where up here is like three or four finger widths, finger lengths from her scalp. So that way it lays like back. See how there's like a puff, I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's like a puff of hair. Um, so that way it like doesn't put tension on their eyes or anything. You don't want to pull their, you know, don't pull their little eyelids up. And then what I do is I take the end of this one, the end of this, front section and I band it to the next section behind it and so that way it keeps it from going forward once again you just want to make sure you're not pulling their eyelids back and that way make sure all this part is a puff she's good and ready to go for the day